Hey, today it's my privilege to welcome into the CBMC offices Doug Spada. You know, we've been talking about the concept of uh, an integrated life, a life where we are the same on Monday morning as we are on Sunday during our time and in our place of worship. And I am just delighted to have found an absolute kindred spirit here in Doug and the work that he at Work Life has been doing. You know that we have featured uh, Monday Morning Atheism as a resource. And uh, I thought it'd be great today just to have a little bit of time together with Doug here in the office to talk about how did Monday Morning Atheism, how did the idea of stopping the switch really come to you uh, based on your experience in the marketplace and the, the things that you've discovered. And, and a, an exciting thing for me is discovered through real research, not just kind of a gut sure. feeling or idea, but the sense that mm. this is what's going on and this is what we have to deal with. And so at CBMC here, we are excited to partner with Doug and to talk about how we can challenge the believer in the marketplace to literally take God at his word and be all that they can be in the marketplace. So tell me a little bit about how did it come about that you sure, got into this whole sure, deal? Lee. First of all, I'd just like to say it's uh, great to be here with you and your staff and uh, just uh, wonderful partnering with you and uh, to just uh, spread the gospel and help people to uh, keep Absolutely. God on Absolutely. in the workplace. But Monday Morning Atheist, uh, the concept of Monday Morning Atheist really came from my own personal experience. Mm, okay. um, I was in the marketplace running a company for a lot of years and although I, I loved God and I wanted to serve God, I would all the time find areas that I would switch him off or mm -hmm. go through a whole day or a couple days and realize where was God and specifically when I had decisions to make or financial decisions I would find that I would switch God off mm -hmm. so about 10 years ago we started a ministry out of San Diego called Work Life mm -hmm. our mission is to help people find life in work because mm -hmm. as you know and you hear in all your uh, your travels work for a lot of people sucks the life out of them sure so we want them to realize that God can give you life in your work. Hmm. So Monday Morning Atheist was really a research project uh, based upon curiosity of why is it that people that love God and want to serve Him, why is it that they switch God off? So hmm. for about seven, eight years, we did research and we cataloged and found we have about 300,000 data points on what makes Christians switch God off at work. So we we, uh, we put that into a form of, of the book, Monday Morning Atheist, along with online tools to help people uh, keep God on mm -hmm. at work. And so, uh, as you all realize this message, the fact that we do at times disconnect uh, in the marketplace and we do mm -hmm. shut God off to some sure. degree, uh, it resonated with me. For years in corporate America, I, I, I played by one set of rules on Sunday sure. and uh, enjoyed a great church life, a great men's group, uh, involved even in adult Sunday school, so whole nine yards. But on Monday morning, I'd arrive at HP in a Fidelity Investments office, mm -hmm. and I would just see a whole different set of rules. Sure. And suddenly there was something about that where the switch went off, to your sure. point, and I behaved and acted in a different way. From the research, we actually created a profile. Okay. So it's a free profile that anybody can uh, get to at stoptheswitch.com. Okay, great. They can take the profile, and we actually we actually use the 30 top issues that we found from our research, okay? That we kind of call them, they're, they're the top propensities for somebody to switch God off. Okay. And, uh, and they're geared around some biblical principles. I mean, it can be things like gossiping hmm. or compensation discontentment. A lot of people, they're not making enough or they're just struggling with that and it, it causes them to switch off or, or they're having uh, uh, struggles with their boss or submitting to different things. There's, there's just a whole slew of things. I personally found that I'm struggling with probably about seven of them hmm. to some degree or another. Some of them have to do with how do you actually talk about Jesus in the 21st century marketplace? So we catalog those. And then after a person gets that profile, they can actually get access to resources to actually help resolve some of those. Great. And so I, I've talked a lot about in, in past times uh, expectation. That's a big word for me, mm -hmm. because I found that when I would arrive at work, sometimes my expectation sure. that God was even interested mm -hmm. in what I'm doing here in the marketplace, and, and, and of course we know that's a lie of the enemy, that's just not true. God is, our work matters to God, and that's something that uh, I think your research and so forth helps to flesh that out, that God is absolutely interested in who I am in the marketplace. Underneath all those kind of issues that actually we have to face. There's three kind of core drivers or beliefs, okay? okay? One of them is what we call spiritual schizophrenia. 
Hmm. And that's just the, the belief that only some of life is spiritual. And we all can, we, uh, all relate we know to what that, that relates to, you know, where that's what you were saying. We yep. kind of switch it off or we, we sort of play TV dinner Christianity, <laughs> where we kind of like segment things in different styles. The other one is something you just alluded to, which really plagued me. And that is, do I really believe that God will act on my behalf? And so what that driver we call the absent God. Oh, interesting. And that is, that is the underlying belief that if it's going to get done, I got to do it mm. and I've got to push it. And I know for a lot of business leaders in your network and stuff, that's something that constantly plagues us. But, uh, and I learned that lesson hard uh, through business where I lost a lot of money not listening to God or starting off wanting to listen to God and worshiping Him and thanking Him for this, but then slowly I would start separating the business decision from my faith. Mm. And, um, and we call that the absent God, man, because I, I just guess did not believe that God would act on my behalf. Now, now, how about, tell me about this. I went into the marketplace some days and I said, you know what, I've been here before. I know how the script goes. I'm living the movie. I got this one. And it was almost as if I said to God, I got this one under control. I know how this works. Yeah. And yet in the back of my mind, there's this little gnawing thing where God says, okay, go ahead but there's a better way. And I think the great thing about Monday Morning Atheism and some of the truths you're revealing through the Stop the Switch campaign is the fact that there is a better way. Yeah, there is. And it's sometimes not just about actually switching God off. Sometimes we see believers say, you know what, I'm not just switching God off, but just like the case you just shared, sometimes it's almost like a dimmer switch. So you actually dimmed it down because of sometimes our own arrogance mm -hmm. or we got it, like you right. said, right. or uh, I've seen this so many times I can do it blindfolded and we, we, we sort of lose perspective and so subtly we switch God off. Mm. And so, uh, and none of this is meant, you know, the, the word atheist, I mean, we know that most of the people watching this uh, are not atheists. Yeah, that's not a category they're going to jump to. That's not a category. <laughs> yeah, but Monday morning atheist is defined as someone who loves God and yeah. wants to serve Him but switches God off at work. And I think all of us understand what that feels like. I think the majority of the body of Christ. So it's really about helping people get an awareness of where they're doing that mm -hmm. and then taking some simple steps forward to start keeping God top of mind. Mm -hmm. See, if you would have walked into your workplace at Fidelity and, and actually in those times at least had mechanisms or, or great resources like CBMC has to actually keep God top of mind, mm -hmm. it may have been a little different. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, we can talk about this a little bit too. And, and please understand, I am an absolute lover of God's church, to the gathering of believers mm -hmm. together on Sunday. But I think we hear so little about yes. who I am on Monday mm -hmm. when we're at church on Sunday that we kind of, um, the dimmer switch is almost a natural default position because I haven't made the connection. That's so. right. Yeah. And that's, uh, uh, as you know, Lee, I have a lot of personal experience in that because mm -hmm. work life was actually developed out of out of my pain in that area. Yeah. Um, I ran a company in, in, in San Diego, but I, I just could not bridge that gap. And well, I had a very dyna dynamic church, but I would, I would go into the marketplace on, on Monday and it was almost, and this is, this is a, you know, an interesting way to think about it. Without addressing this intentionally in our churches and in our organizations, we accidentally, most of the time, mm -hmm. we breed Monday morning atheist. Mm -hmm. We switch to a form of practical atheism that we never intended to do, and we w would not say that we would like it, yeah. but we're not sure about how to get out of it. But I did have experience where um, I, you know, I would communicate that I never heard it taught, preached, mm -hmm. or anything mm -hmm. in the church, mm -hmm. and I, 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 as I tell pastors around the country, I became I came disillusioned and sort of disconnected from the mission of the church when the real mission of the church was to equip the saints to for the work the of ministry. Absolutely, yeah. And, uh, and that's where we had most of our influence and I saw people come to Christ and so I had trouble bridging that gap but uh, we've also been helping churches over the last 10 years kind of shift that and actually communicate that clearly Great. And, and, and keep intentional process in place to actually help you know, equip the saints. Listen, I know that you are good intentioned and love God and you want to make this connection. I'm just telling you how natural it was for me to disconnect. Yeah. 
And uh, so it's important that we have some tools and resources and I think, frankly, an accountability team behind us that keeps us accountable to dealing with these issues head on. Uh, that's how we're going to be the most effective in the marketplace. Um, we have an enemy that would love us to not figure this out. And I'm committed to figuring it out with you. I think I would just encourage the constituents of uh, CBMC to, uh, to think out of the box. It's a new day in CBMC. It's a new day uh, on the earth. I mean, God's doing new things and, and he's creating new ways that we can actually communicate to people. And so um, God developed uh, Monday Morning Atheist. He even gave us the title, the everything. So it's, it's all for his glory. Mm. Um, and so we have just seen people using creative concepts because there's not anybody that sees this or that we share with it doesn't all of a sudden just almost kind of raise their hand and yeah. say yeah me too just yeah. like you heard from from Lee so uh, think new think out of the box um, and and use the creative resources that CBMC is kind of bringing uh, uh, to your people to actually uh, reach people for the glory of God absolutely so the message the mission the vision for CBMC has not changed but as we come across things like the provocative messages of Monday Morning Atheism, where we can literally challenge other believers in the marketplace to, to align behind the important mission that we do have. And that is, as you know, to present Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord to the business and professional man, and to train him to live out the Great Commission within his sphere of influence. And so I want to thank you for being with us. Yeah, you're welcome. I know we're going to have a lot more opportunities to share and to talk and to develop mm -hmm. things. The creative juices are flowing here at CBMC. They've been flowing at Work Life. We're just excited for the partnership that God is bringing together. And it's all in the vein to help you be as effective as possible in reaching the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ.